Hey everybody, so today what we're talking about is significant figures. So significant figures is one of those things that at the end of the year some people say they hate still and that it's the worst subject ever. It's really, really simple. You just have to have the right mindset from the get-go. Uh, again, this is just kind of one of those topics that some people hate and some people like. Uh, what are significant figures? Significant figures just tells us how many numbers we should have in our final answer. Okay, so let's get started. So again, we are talking about significant figures. So first things first, we gotta determine what counts as a significant figure, okay? Any non-zero number is a significant figure. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those are all significant figures. So if I were to ask you how many significant figures are in the number 12, okay, remember we count non-zero numbers, so one and two, so that has two significant figures, or zigzags. Okay, if I were to give you the number 5,322, okay, how many sig figs would that have? Four, there's four numbers, one, two, three, four. Four sig figs. Okay, so any non-zero numbers you know to count. The real trouble comes in when we're dealing with zeros, okay? Now, let me tell you zeros that you could count every single time, okay? Zeros that are trapped in between two non-zero numbers. So, a number like, we'll make this example one, like 303i. Remember, I told you you could count uh, any non-zero number. So we could count these as sig figs, but what about that zero in the center, okay? With zeros that are trapped in between two non-zero numbers, we could always count them, all right? So we're gonna count this zero as well. So if you see a zero trapped in between two non-zero numbers, that's counted as a sig fig. So we have three sig figs. Okay? Uh, it doesn't matter how many are trapped in between those numbers. We still count all of them. So if this was 30,000, and three, okay? Uh, all those zeros are still trapped in between two non-zero numbers, so we would count all of those, okay? So it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, six, six. Okay, so we count all non-zero numbers and we count all zeros that are trapped in between two non-zero numbers. Now let's talk about zeros that are leading and zeros that are trailing, okay? so. Uh, let's define leading and trailing zeros. So, leading zeros. Okay, what are those? Those are just zeros that are out in front. So I'm thinking any zero that is out in front of a number. Okay, these are leading zeros, these all leading guys that are in front before we get to a non-zero number. What are trailing zeros? They're the opposite. Trailing zeros are zeros at the end. Okay, so when I say leading zeros, I'm talking about these zeros out in front. When I say trailing zeros, I'm talking about these zeros that are falling behind. So what is our rule with leading zeros, okay? As far as counting them as sig figs go. For leading zeros, we never count leading zeros, okay? We never count leading zeros. Uh, they just aren't significant, okay? They aren't important in terms of counting if they're significant or not. So if I were to look at this number right here, how many sig figs would be in this number here? Just one, okay? Just one. Remember, we don't count any leading zeros. I'm not just talking about this guy. I'm talking about all those leading guys, okay? So we're not gonna count this one, this one, this one, or this one. This guy only has one sig fig, okay? Uh, trailing zeros, okay? We never count trailing zeros unless okay unless they 
there is a decimal in the number, in the hashtag. Okay, that means number. Um, so we never count trailing zeros unless there is a decimal in the number. So if I look at this number here, okay, these are all trailing zeros, okay? I don't count these unless there's a decimal. Is there a decimal anywhere in this number? No, there's two commas, but no decimals, okay? So we aren't counting these zeros either, but we will count that non-zero number, okay? So this has one sig fig as well. So both of these guys have one sig fig. So remember, we never count leading zeros, we only count trailing zeros if there's a decimal. So, let's get some examples going. So let's do 230, okay? 230, let's look at this guy. Again, uh, I'll definitely count these guys because they're non-zeros, but now this zero, right? Is that a leading zero or a trailing zero? A trailing zero. Do I count trailing zeros? No, unless there's a decimal. Is there a decimal anywhere in this number? No. So I don't count this guy. I only have two samples. Again, we don't count trailing zeros unless there's a decimal. What about 1300? How many sig figs are in that guy? Okay, again, we count our non zero numbers one and three. These zeros, are they leading or trailing? They're trailing, so that means we only count them if there's a decimal in the number. Is there a decimal in the number anywhere? Nope, so we only have two sig figs. Now what if I give you an example like that, okay? Again, two sig figs, we count that. And now these zeros, they're trailing still, but I only count them as there is a decimal. Is there a decimal? Yep. So we count them. So now there are four sig figs. Okay? So those are examples with some trailing zeros. Let's do some with some leading zeros. Okay? Again, I never count leading zeros. Never count them. There's no decimal rule with leading zeros. It's only with trailing. So leading zeros, I never count them. So this guy only has two sig figs. Okay? Let's try this one. Okay. Again, I never count leading zeros. So we could just put an X through those guys. I'm going to count these threes because they're non-zero numbers. What about these zeros in the middle? Do I count those? Yes, I always count trapped zeros. Always count zeros in the middle. So now I have four sig figs, four sig figs. All right, let's do a couple examples where I'm throwing a lot at you, okay? be any of these, any of our rules, okay? How many sig figs are in this number, okay? I got this non-zero number and I got some trailing zeros, okay? I don't count trailing zeros unless there's a decimal. Well, look, there's a decimal. So I count three sig figs. I'm just gonna put SF for now, because I'm lazy. Um, 4.632. Okay, all non-zero numbers, four sig figs. Fifteen thousand six hundred. Okay, again, trailing zeros. I don't count those guys, right? Unless there's a decimal and there's no decimal. So I only have three sig figs. Okay, I got 15,632, okay? I'm gonna count all these non-zero guys. What about these zeros? Am I gonna count them? 
Well, they're trapped, right? They're trapped in between that six and that three there. So I'm counting those guys too. So I have seven sixes. Let's go with 1.0070. Okay, 1.0070. Uh, I count that one, I count that seven, I count those two zeros in the middle because they're trapped in between two non-zero numbers, but that trailing zero, do I count it? Remember, we only count trailing zeros if there's a decimal in the number. There's a decimal right there. So we have five right there. One more tricky one. One thousand eight hundred and ninety, okay? I count these non zeros. I count these trapped zeros. Trailing zero, do I count it? Not in this instance, because there's no decimal in the number. So there's only five sixes in that. Okay? Again, we don't count trailing zeros unless it's a decimal. Alright, I want to do one more example, then I'm done with this, and then we'll move on. Zero point zero 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 three zero zero. What do you think? Okay. Well, look here. Leading zeros. Do I ever count those? Nope. Hey, look. I got a three. I'm gonna count that guy. But what about those two trailing zeros? Again, I don't count trailing zeros unless there's a decimal. Is there a decimal in this number? Yep. So I count these guys. Okay. So now you have the basics down. Okay, this is the basics for counting sig figs. But now let's talk about if we're going to add them and if we're going to subtract them and then if we're going to multiply or divide them. Okay, so when we're actually putting them into actual practice. So, for addition slash subtraction. Okay, there's a rule. For addition and subtraction, they're the same. Whether you add or subtract, the rule is the same, which is nice. Uh, the number with the smallest amount of digits past the decimal. Or I should say after. That's all I'm writing. That's what we're focusing on. Okay, we're focusing on the number with the smallest amount of digits after the decimal. Okay, and what does that mean? Well, let me give you an example. So I have 8.632 plus, let's go, 8.43, and then I go 8.2. Okay, so I have an addition problem here. I want to figure out how many answers I'm going to have in my final, or how many significant figures I'm going to have in my final answer, okay? So what I do is I look at the number with the smallest amount of digits after the decimal, okay? So we're looking at numbers past the decimal. Doesn't have to be significant figures, just numbers past the decimal. I look at this number, and it's got three digits past the decimal, okay? I look at this number, and it's got four or two digits past the decimal, I could count, two digits past the decimal, okay? And I look at this last one, and it's got one digit past the decimal, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at all my numbers, and whichever number has the smallest amount of digits past the decimal, that's how many my final answer is gonna have past the decimal as well, okay? So this one had three, this one had two, this one had one, so our smallest number is one digit past the decimal, so my answer is only going to have one digit past the decimal, okay? So I add all these up, and when you look at it in your calculator, it'll give you the full drawn-out version of 25.262, okay? Remember, since we added or subtracted, we only want our answer to have one digit past the decimal, right? So three here, two there, one, our answer should only have one past the decimal. So. I 
I want to get as close to my original answer as possible. So the closest I could get to 25.262 with only one digit past the decimal is either going to be 25.2 or 25.3. Well, which one is closer to 25.262? It's going to be that guy right there. Okay, that guy right there. So, again, if we look at the decimals past or the digits past the decimal, we find the one that has the least amount of digits past the decimal, and that's how many our answer is going to have past the decimal. Okay, so that's addition or subtraction. Let's do another one real quick. I'll leave that rule up there. Let's go 28.334 plus 28.3322 plus 28.3333. Okay. Again, we're adding or subtracting. Now, these could be subtraction, they could be addition, they could be a mix of both. It's still going to be the same rule. Okay. Whether those are minus signs or addition signs, it's still going to be the same rule. So again, since I'm adding and subtracting, I'm looking at digits past the decimal. This one has three. This one has four digits past the decimal. This one has five digits past the decimal. So my answer is only going to have three digits past the decimal. We look at the smallest one. If I added all this up, okay, my answer would have been 84.99953. Okay, try to think in your head before I answer this, what would be the closest answer with only three digits? past the decimal, okay? Well, I could either have 84.999 or I could have 85.000, okay? Which answer is closest to my original answer? 85.000. Don't worry, we'll get plenty of practice on this. Last rule, okay? That's addition and subtraction. We're just focused on small amount, uh, smallest amount of digits past the decimal. Now let's do multiplication slash division. Okay, and multiplication slash division, okay? If we're doing it with multiplication or division, we are going to focus on the number with the least amount of statistics. So if we look at the number with the least amount of statistics. Okay? We look at the number with the least amount of sig figs, and then that's what our answer is going to have. Whichever number has the least amount of sig figs, that's how much we're going to have in our answer. So I'm only going to do one example. We have 16.32 times 15.763 divided by 1.3245. Okay? Again, multiplication and division, they're the same either way. If these were all multiplication, same rule. All division, same rule. Here we have a mix, same rule. Okay? So I'm going to look at how many sig figs are in each number. This one has four, this one has five, this one has five, okay? Now with multiplication and division, we look at the one with the least amount of sig figs. This guy is the winner with the least amount of sig figs, four. So that means my answer is gonna have four sig figs as well. So if I simplified this all out and put it in my calculator, it'd give me a full answer of Now this is why sig figs is important because that's a lot of numbers. We want to get rid of as many of those as possible so that we don't put too much data in there or uh, round incorrectly or anything like that. So again, I need four sig figs in this answer. The closest I could get to this answer, okay, with only four sig figs is 194.2, okay, 194.2. I'm at my 20 minute mark, so I'm cutting it. 
Okay. Question you might have is what if we have a problem with addition and multiplication in it? You're going to follow the multiplication rules. Okay. The multiplication division rule supersedes the addition subtraction rule. Okay. So if you see a problem with addition sub or subtraction and multiplication division, we're going to follow that multiplication and division rule. Okay, guys, that is sig figs. Look for some practice and have a great day.